Well, hello, everybody. I'm Steve Sparks. I'm the CEO here at Wichita Falls Faith Mission. This is the assistant, <laughs> Emerson, my granddaughter. Um, I get the privilege of babysitting this afternoon, so I, she's coming to graduation. This is a great day. This is the day we look forward to every month, Amen. seeing these men accomplish great, great things. So, men, I'm really proud of you. Excited to be your friend and excited to be your brother. Praise God. And now Amen. I'm excited to be your fellow traveler in this Christian journey. I wish you all the best. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for your love and for all the things that you do for us behind the scenes that we take for granted, those blessings that are beyond our ability to count. I thank you, God, for these men and for their desire to want to have something better in their lives and how that desire brought them to faith mission and and you met them here and gave them purpose in their lives i pray father that this will continue in their lives that you'll surround them with men who will challenge them and hold them accountable and bring them bring out the best in them we pray father that you will Send men who will spur them on to love and to do good deeds. And I pray, God, that you will be honored and glorified in this service today. And that's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good afternoon. Y'all can tell we get excited about graduation around here. We love it. We love it. There's a lot of hard work goes into this. And there's a lot of people out there waiting for guys to come home and uh, get busy back doing family. And uh, these guys are really anxious to get that done. So it's, it's great to see them put in the work, get the effort done, and do what needs to be done. We're going to talk about what goes on here. A lot of people don't exactly know what we do here. Uh, the New Beginnings program at Faith Mission is all about the process of change. In the church world, we call that process sanctification. Sanctification is the process that God uses to separate or set aside his children from the world so that he can prepare us for his purposes. That process begins with a trip down the aisle and ends when you meet the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But did all things become new? Did your body change when you were born again? I wish it had. Did your mind change when you were born again? The Bible tells us that it didn't. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 tells us that we are all three-part beings. We are a spirit, we live in a body, and we have a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. When we walk down that aisle, it is our spirit that willingly and happily receives Jesus Christ. Our body, however, must be retrained, and our mind is now at enmity or at war with God. Webster's Online Dictionary defines enmity as positive, active, and typically mutual hatred or ill will romans 8 6 through 8 the amplified version says this now the mind of the flesh is dead both now and forever because it pursues sin but the mind of the spirit is life and peace the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with god both now and forever the mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits is at enmity or actively hostile to god it does not submit itself to god's law since it cannot and those who are in the flesh living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulses also cannot please God. So how do we change? How do we overcome our thought processes? And how do we become the men that God wants us to be? The Apostle Paul posed that same question in Romans 7, 14 through 24 when he wrote this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do... That I do not practice, but what I hate, that is what I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present within me. I really want to. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that is what I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. 
I find in a law that evil is present within me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, my spirit, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? From the moment we walk down that aisle and give our lives to Christ, we are in a struggle. The exact struggle that Paul just defined for us. Our spirit wants to please God, but our body still has the same old habits and our mind is at war with and even hates God. So what are we to do? Well, Paul gave us the question, then he gave us the answer. That answer is found in Romans 12, 2, which says this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. First, we need to have our mind renewed so that we can be completely transformed into that new creation that Jesus wants us to be. So how do we change our mind? That's the subject of this program, changing minds, changing hearts. How do we subject our rebellious will to God's control and learn not to let our emotions manipulate us? Well, in Romans 12, 2, Paul tells us that our transformation is the direct result of the renewing of our mind. So then how do we renew our mind? We find that answer in Ephesians 5, 26 through 27, which says this, Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. We are sanctified or set apart for God's purposes by Christ Jesus. And that process involves a daily washing of our minds by the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the word of God is alive, it's active, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That is how we obtain the mind of Christ, through the word of God. Reading, studying, meditating on, talking about, thinking about, and performing the word of God. And that is the New Beginnings program, simple yet incredibly effective. I've had many judges ask me, what's the secret to your program? Why are you so successful? I said, I have one secret to my program. His name is Jesus Christ. That's it. I don't have anything else. I had a couple come to me for marital counseling one time many years ago when I was pastor of a church. And uh, I had married this couple. And about two years later, they got into a lot of sin, uh, going to the bars and having some difficulty. Their marriage started to break up. So they came into my office and they said, we would like to sit down and talk about how to fix our marriage. I said, great. I reached into my desk drawer. I pulled out my Bible. I set it on my desk. And the husband said, nope, we don't want to use that. He said, we don't want to use that. We don't want to go there. We're not Christians anymore. I said, well, I put my Bible back in my drawer. I said, you guys have a nice day. I don't have anything else to offer but Jesus. Amen. That's it. That's all I got. That's my one tune, Jesus Christ. There's nothing else that works. There's nothing else that works. The men that are sitting on this front row today have undergone a transformation in their spirit. They are a new creation in Christ Jesus. They are born again. And they have begun the transformation in their minds through the sanctification process. So they are being born again. And finally, one day their bodies will return to heaven from whence they came and they will be born again. These men will be involved in the sanctification process for the rest of their lives. It began here. And Jesus said that he is faithful to complete the work that he has begun in us and that he will never leave us or forsake us. At this time, I would like to ask Jeff Miller, Kevin Cravens, Tony Fretwell, and Josh Hannes, come up on the stage, please. These, these four individuals will be receiving their certificate for completing level two of the New Beginnings program. Today, they begin their final six months in the program in level three, which is job readiness. Congratulations, Jim.
We have two that are not wor uh, that are working today, so they're not here. Okay, finally, I'm here to, uh, today to introduce our three level three program graduates and uh, wish them well as they continue their journey into the next phase of their transformation. Yes. Our first graduate is Charles Ward. <laughs> What's up, Chuck? That's the last time I get to say that. <laughs> Amen. What's up, Chuck? I love to say that to him every time I see him. Chuck is an amazing man. He is an encourager. He's a cheerleader for the other guys in the program and a joy maker in the house of the Lord. Our praise and worship leader at Legacy Church refers to him as the hype it up guy. And she, she said she misses him every time he is out of church. Chuck really is a fun guy to be around. He is also a student of the Word. Chuck loves to read his Bible and share Christ with everyone he sees. He has truly applied the spiritual principles that he's learned here to his life, and his family has been able to see the difference in everything that he says and does. Absolutely. Chuck will be returning to Oklahoma and his family after today's graduation, and I am fully convinced that he is heading into his promised land, and I look forward to hearing great reports from him and his family in the next few years. I'm so excited for you, Chuck. Thank you. I have two scriptures for you today, sir. The first is 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 15. And it said, but as for you, continue in the things that you have learned and of which you are convinced, holding tightly to the truth, knowing that from whom you learned them and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ, surrendering your entire self to him and having absolute confidence in his wisdom, power, and goodness. Finally, 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7, which says this, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You got this, buddy. You got it. Man. Our next graduate is Cody Gooseby. I have a... Uh, I have uh, an increased love for Cody Goosby after uh, I had an emergency at my house. I had a four-foot bull snake wrapped around my toilet. My wife called me, and she said, help. I said, you're calling the wrong guy. I said, I'm not rescuing you from any snakes, baby. So we called. Cody came out there and wrestled that snake and took it away. Thank you, Cody. Cody has uh, mellowed considerably since he first arrived here at Faith Mission. <laughs> Pretty doggone annoying when he first got here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of our relationship, I wondered if he was even going to make it a week. In fact, when Jerry DeBoard first brought him here, he refused to stay. Uh, when he finally did come back, he was determined to make it through, but I wasn't quite sure that I was going to let him. He was a little bit cranky. A little bit cranky, Cody. However, as time re uh, rolled on, Cody proved to be a first-rate employee, a man of the word, and a regular participant in Bible debates. Cody loves to study the Bible, pray, and go to church, and he will literally give you the shirt off his back, his lunch, or his last cigarette. Everybody will get the absolutely. Cody has worked hard to get to this point in the program, and as of today, he is employed full-time with Marshan Construction, and he now resides in the transition house. Lord help you all over there. Uh, you, have, <laughs> you have done an amazing job, Cody. I have one scripture for you today, sir. It is John 15, 16, and it says this, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name as my representative, he may give it to you. Whatever's happened in the past, throw away the rearview mirror. God said you were born for such a time as this. Keep moving. <laughs> Our final graduate is Stephen Cavett. Stephen is not a man of many words. In fact, he is a man of almost no words at all. Someone once said, preach Christ at all times and when necessary, use words. That would suit Stephen to a T. He is not a big conversationalist, but he lets his work speak for him. Stephen has been working for Tim Burney at the store for quite some time now, and he's done an excellent job. In fact, he has done so well that we are graduating him from this program early. We moved him to the transition house early, and he's already moved over there. So uh, he is now currently employed at Marshan Construction, and I'm sure that he's going to do well. Stephen, I have one scripture for you today, sir. It is Hebrews 3, 12 through 14, and it says this, 
Take care, brothers and sisters, there not be any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to trust and rely on the Lord, a heart that turns away from the living God. But continually encourage one another every day, as long as it is called today, and there is an opportunity, so that none of you will be hardened into settled rebellion by the deceitfulness of sin, its cleverness, its delusive glamour, uh, its sophistication, for we believers have become partakers of Christ, sharing in all that the Messiah has for us. If only we hold firm our newborn confidence, which originally led us to him until the end. Never take a step to the left. Amen. Congratulations, gentlemen. Amen. First off, uh, yes, faith mission. <laughs> Faith Mission, I love you guys. Uh, I love you, man. Love everything baby. about this program, uh, Mr. Sparks uh, put a core group of individuals here that are completely dedicated. Uh, they're very loving in what they do. Uh, all they want to see is to do anything to help and see success in this program. Uh, Dwayne, love you, brother. Jeff, Gary. All you guys, Jamie, my brothers, yeah, uh, just want to say, you know, six weeks in this program, I come in here desperate, hopeless, broken, <laughs> broken, <laughs> broken, plus broken, the three ladies come up to me, Bob, sent me to Lamar's store, six weeks into the program, and I was walking the halls here, anxiety kicking really bad, panic attacks. Miss Cody, thank you. Walked with me, but Miss Miss Brenna, Brandy, and Melissa. They didn't even know this man. <laughs> they come up to me. <laughs> I'll never forget it. But they said, "Can I pray for you?" And they put hands on me, started praying, and. He said, well, take a little time. <laughs> shook me up. I always get shook up. <laughs> but I love you guys for that. Because they changed me forever. Amen. Right then I knew I wanted what each of you, one of you guys had. And that was a relationship with God. Amen. That's Amen. all it took. Amen. You know, that's all it took. Amen. Jerry, Stacy, Cody. All you guys, I love you guys. Ariel, man, I, I love you guys. Thank you for all you guys do for us here at Faith Mission. Huh? Mm -hmm. Your service. Huh? It's a big deal. It might not seem like that much of a big deal, but it really is. Huh? Because it takes us broken fools that we are as jack wagons at the time, man. Huh? And, and they mentor us. You know? There's not a... And they can see right through it. If you've got an issue, they're the first ones there saying, hey, let's talk. Huh? Let's talk. Whether you want to talk or not, but they're there. <laughs> you know, they've always got a good, encouraging word to say. All my brothers here, grace this program, man. Huh? It gets real. Been out five days. <laughs> I miss this place. I really do. But it's <laughs> like... You know, seven months in the program, my wife and then and daughters, you know, I, I wasn't going to leave the program, but when it was time to come home on Sundays, I'd say, Daddy's re Daddy wants to be at home. I'm ready to be home. And they said, every time in the driveway, they'd come up, my daughter would say, Daddy, your story matters. Your story's going to matter. And I said, my story does matter. You know, but these... Every pass, they told me that. Mm -hmm. Just an encouragement from them, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I hated leaving them, but you know what? My story did matter. Right, it's a program matters, man. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. It say, you know, where I was hopeless, I got hope now. Huh? Where I was broken, I got joy, brother. Amen. I yeah. really do. I really do. Huh? See so much growth in this program, even Victor. Huh? It's sad, but I, you've been here three weeks. We're out of the gate. See the growth in this man. And each of you guys, man, embrace this. It don't matter what, what color shirt you got on. Everybody here is bringing something unique and special to this program. 
huh? that helps each and every one of us. Yeah. Huh? It really does. So I love you guys. Thank you. I don't want to take up all your time, but God bless this program. God bless you guys. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, sir. God, gang. That's what's up. That's what it is. You know, uh, you ain't got a lot to say, though. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long, long road. Yes, we do. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> Started regulations, you know what I'm saying? Going backward, you know what I mean? But uh, I want to thank you, Bob, Steve, Jeff, Wayne, man, Miss F.E., you feel me? Yeah. That took a lot. That took the, took the breath out of me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad it did or I wouldn't have got where, I, where I'm at now. Gary, love you, bro. Chris, and all y'all guys, that's what's up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Jerry DeBoer, man, if it wasn't for you, bro, I'd probably walked out of here, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Mean a lot to me, bud. Uh, I gotta tell you, I just hang in there, man. You'll get there. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let me ask you a few words. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Love you, Coach. Yes. Love you, Coach. Yes. Love you. Yes. Love you. I would like to say, first and foremost, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to say thank you to what I refer to as the angels at 1300. <laughs> it's you guys, the staff, the programmers, the clients, the supporters behind the scenes that nobody sees. Uh, all you guys, man, I, uh, the, I believe this place is a, is a resource match by none on earth. <clears throat> And I believe with every atom of my being that no one on earth loves you like this man right here, except, right. Je except Jesus Christ. Except Jesus Christ. Amen. Cadillac. Brandy. <clears throat> Ariel. Cody. All you guys. Marchand, all the Marchand guys, man. Jerry, uh, Jerry, <laughs> I want to talk about an amazing person. Uh, I wrote a I wrote a speech three different times for this, and I said I just let the Holy Ghost tell them something, tell them what they what what needs to be said, you know. And uh, I've been through a lot in life. Uh, a child molester stole my piece away from me when I was eleven, and uh, I tried everything under the sun and an insane amount of it to fill that void. And the only thing that did was Jesus, you know. Uh, I've always known what the book said, always. My earliest memories in life was my nanny reading scripture, but I didn't have an adequate understanding of it, you know. Our problem is not any, it's not too much of anything out there. Our problem is a deficit of a full working knowledge and understanding of the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, I am so, so grateful for, for, for have, have, having crossed paths with all of you. There is zero, zero, zero coincidence in a Christian life. Please, please meditate, take an adequate measure of time and meditate on that. Uh, there's a group, group of us green shirts uh, in this room. Charlie Brown's one of them. Uh, Chris, Steve, and Chuck. We did nearly 100 years in the penitentiary together combined. Uh, <clears throat> this grace period we're afforded that, that I like to call it, it's from birth until death. You know, that's how long you have, just like Judas Iscariot up to the up to the upper room discourse. You had every opportunity right up to, to Jesus' death to, to take it, make a change, and he didn't do it. Please, you guys, please utilize this resource and 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 use it. Take every advantage of this this place to get to get it right. You know, I <clears throat> I just have one more thing to say, and this is, and I, I have to, I have to. These words go through my head numerous times a day, and it's from the Book of James. Oh. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
to the 12 tribes scattered among the nation's greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete in all things. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. The one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. This place right here, guys, is a godsend. You people truly make the, the world a better place for all. Mm -hmm. Truly you do. And I am forever Thank in your you. debt. We're going to pass out these, make it official. Stephen, come on up here, brother. God dang, y'all. Charles. Thank you. Amen. And Cody. I considered you paid in full when you got that snake out of my bath. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I have no words that are going to follow up after that. Uh, we've heard some amazing testimonies from these three men so far about you know, just moving on to the Word. Jake has got quite a, a more formal version of their testimonies. My name is Charles Ward. I've been in a program for 12 months now. I come in very broken. Uh, at the age of six to 10, I was sexually abused. After I got through that, uh, it was brought to the forefront four years ago. I started having anxiety and panic attacks. My therapist recommended faith mission. I was feeling really, really ho hopeless, desperate, and I thought, what can go wrong? Uh, I wanted to give this a shot. Everyone at faith mission is very dedicated to what they do. They're very loving. Uh, they all have similar stories as mine. Um, this program has been, it's a faith-based program. It's what I was lacking in my life was a relationship with God, to get to know Jesus. Uh, through eight months of the program here, I give up all my medication I was on uh, I give it to God. They've changed my uh, life forever. I'm very grateful that I come here. Randy, Melissa, Miss Brenna, six weeks into this program, you guys, you guys, you guys changed, changed my life. When you put hands on me and prayed for me without even knowing me. And from that day forth, I knew I wanted to embrace what you guys had, what you offered me, uh, it was a, a major, a major event up to now. Uh, I embraced, I wanted to have what all you guys had, and that was peace, joy, and I found it here. You know, four months into the program, uh, uh, I was at Legacy Church, and it was a, you know, I was broken. Um, me, my wife, and kids. I was learning about Jesus and God. I talked to my wife and kids and I says, I wanted to be baptized to get, as a family. We went to Legacy Church. It was a big deal to me. Um, I wanted them to get to know God, get to know Jesus. And we we're all four baptized together there at Legacy by Mr. Bob Johnson. It was in the amazing and emotional time for me because I knew my wife, my kids, and me were going to be okay. We pray together when we, when I see them. Uh, they've done this ride with me. They've been here every Sunday. To, they love church. They love God just as much as I do. 
and it's made a big impact not only on my life but on their lives too and I'm grateful for that um, life is good now Stephen Cabot I've been here through 13 months yeah well my, my pops he was a uh, in penitentiary most of my life, you know. Really didn't have no relationship with him, whatever, you know what I mean? But uh, my stepdad, he pretty much grabbed me since I was like four or five, you know what I mean? He's a real good guy, you know. Uh, he's an old outlaw. My whole family's outlaws, you know what I'm saying? And uh, growing up, I, I wanted to be like him, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just a real deal, you know? Little Dixie Mafia, a lot of people don't know about it, but it's real. The reason I'm here is because uh, I was on, I'm on 10 years probation. I just went back down through there, got on the needle, got back on drugs. Like I said, I lost my pops. I was on uh, 10 years probation. I didn't show up for six months. And uh, he shot a kite out to me. He said, oh, you better show up, you know what I mean? Or uh, you're going to send me back to penitentiary. He said, go back to my office, you know? And I, I go back here and I'm like, I know I'm going back to prison, you know what I mean? And I sat there and I was like, he's like, you know, what's the problem? I said, I lost my pops, you know what I'm saying? And I just broke down and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, I'm gonna call up the rehab over here and uh, see if I can't get you in. So, <clears throat> to me, it wasn't, <clears throat> it seemed like God grabbed me from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? It just led me over here. Oh, since I've been in the mission, oh man, it's like, I'm at peace with myself. You know what I'm saying? I used to live in anger a lot. You know, I had a, had an empty, you know, empty void, you know, going on in my life. I didn't know what it was, but I found Jesus. And, that's, that's what's up, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm at peace now, and no matter what the situation I'm in, I just give it over to him, you feel me? I got a whole different outlook of everything, you know what I mean? Like every little thing, you feel me? Honestly, it's hard to explain, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's different. Stay sober, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm trying to get my kids back, you know, and uh, just trying to live right, you know what I mean? Stay walking my path, you know? You know, I used to gang bang, you know what I mean? I gang bang for Jesus, you feel me? To sling a dope, a sling hope, you know what I mean? Uh, my name is Cody Goolsby. I've been in the program for 11 months. Grew up in Spanish Fort, Texas. Uh, I was adopted by the greatest man on earth when I was two. I had three siblings. I, I had the greatest, still have the greatest family on earth. And they are the only thing that, that helped me to make it. To, to where I'm at today, uh, them and Jesus Christ, of course. Uh, my peace stolen away from me when I was 11 years old by a close family friend, bank president, cattleman, and child molester. And uh, it took me, I only live 45 minutes from here, it took me 29 years to get here. Uh, and I have finally attained unshakable peace. I'm truly, truly grateful for the opportunity I've had here at, at Faith Mission. It has, uh, it, these guys are the, what I call the angels at 1300, the, the staff, clients, programmers, uh, supporters, behind the scene donation people, all those guys I, I attribute my peace to and, and give thanks. I tried, I tried everything under the sun uh, to fill the void that, that, that was left in me and, and, and an insane amount of all of it. And the only thing that finally did it was was a, an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, and for that I am I am so so thankful. Uh, Jerry D. Board, that's how I heard about the mission. Uh, the man that that he got the the day he got out of prison in 2012 is the day he took me to the care flight helicopter, you know, and uh, it was a miracle as a, as a, another of the million miracles in my life. Uh, Jerry graduated the program four years ago. He and I have been friends for 45 years. A couple of years ago, uh, I hit him up. I said, hey man, uh, can you help me out? And he said, yep, yeah, I sure can. He said, I'm gonna send you some money. He says, the last thing you're getting from me till you get your life right. And uh, two years later, I come up here, come by, I talked to Bob for about 45 minutes and thought, whoa, who is this raving lunatic? Wow. And I told Bob, I said, I don't think I'm ready to commit to something like this. And Jerry said, all right, I got to go back to work. Call me when you're ready to get, get it together. And uh, he left, went back to work. Things continued to spiral in a downward, <laughs> downward direction. And I got arrested over some menial uh, stuff. Got it, the, the judge 
let me out of jail on a PR bond, told me he suggested I go get in a program somewhere. So I called Jerry up and I came back and here I am, saved my life, saved my life. I think I, I landed at the number one place in the universe to attain the peace in my life. That, and that's where I got it, was, was what, what I gained here was, was, there's no other place in the world. There's no other place. There's no other people in the world like these people uh, that truly, genuinely love us. And uh, I'm, I'm forever in debt. Uh, Stephen, the other day I was uh, looking around online and I saw a shirt that said Hope Dealer. I'm going to get it for you, man. That's, uh, that's, that's it, man. That was amazing. Let's hear it for our graduates, guys. Man. You know, uh, Cody, Cody, when he was up here, he talked about the, the period of grace, the time from our birth until the time we die. And, you know, we, we can't get the beginning back. You know, we've, are, we've all already experienced our beginning. And that's what I love so much about this program is it's some new beginnings. Mm -hmm. You know, every single one of you gentlemen in here, you three included, this is your new beginning. This is day one starting out. Um, you know, we, we've had as staff members, we've had the pleasure of seeing a lot of men come through here. And one thing that's a common denominator there is most of the time when men show up, they show up alone, but they never leave alone. If you're a, a friend or a family member of these three graduates up here, we please stand. Okay. All right. Woohoo! Yeah! That's the redemptive power of Jesus. Amen. Y'all are awesome. I love y'all. Um, we're going to go ahead and close out in prayer. I'm going to do something that I haven't done before. Um, Cody, you're, you're on fire right now, brother. Uh, would you come pray us out? Yes, man. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with a humble heart and an open mind, Lord. We ask that we give thanks for grace. We thank, we thank you for the love you demonstrated first, Lord. Ask that you lead, guide, and direct our every thought, word, and action, Lord, so that we would be the ambassadors for Christ you would have us be. Lord, we ask uh, you keep a special hedge of protection around these men in this program that are struggling with the things that, that, that they're trying to c come to terms with, Lord. We just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for these people in this place, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.